Hello and welcome back to Take Refuge 3D with me, Peter. Quick tutorial on how to optimize photogrammetry data for um, game engines. So I've got this high poly pair. Let's turn on our statistics uh, wherever they've gone. Okay, there you can see we've got about two and a half million verts. Okay, a couple of things that we need to do. This is a high poly um, object. We need to make a copy. And that might just crash Blender. Okay, so now we've got the two copies here. Um, let's just select both of them and apply all of our... Um, transforms excuse me if it's a bit slow we've got 10 million uh, verts in the scene and we're just gonna hide the second one and we're going to go down to our data object properties actually we'll keep that one as named as high so we don't have to rename it again later and we're going to go down to remesh under data we're going to bring our voxel size down to uh, 0.05 something like that and our adaptivity up to about um, I don't know about 0.5 what that will do will make the areas where it's flatter have bigger edges and where it's got more detail it will have more curvature we'll turn most of these off except for volume and color attributes and fingers crossed let's just quickly save this we'll call it pair it does not crash okay we've done our voxel remesh that's gone a bit low so what we really need to do is have a tinker with this i will just pause the recording while i find the right um uh values for this object okay i've settled on 0 0.004 and 0 0.7 adaptivity so if we re we're going to make sure that we shade this smooth and voxel remesh and we've got roughly the same shape so if I turn the pair high back on it should match and yes it does so I'm going to rename them this one to pair actually we'll use ngon um We'll turn our pen pair high off for a second and we're going to use our Angon Pro and we'll call this pair. Rename and create a low poly. Okay, and you can see that that's actually improved our uh, vertex uh, normals a bit better. And our face normals, if we go to material mode, you can see that's quite a smooth mesh, but we've maintained some of the details down here and on the stem. So this is going to be our low poly. If we look at that, it's reasonably low poly, but a little bit of extra detail on the stem and things like that. Um, so that one's pretty good. Now we'll turn our attribute colors back on. We'll turn our pair low off. Actually, we'll UV it quickly first before I forget. We'll just bring a little UV workspace up over here. And we'll just click on that and we'll click we'll go 66 and we'll click Smart UV Unwrap and Combine. If we open that up, that should be okay. Just going to come down to our UV Pack Master. Turn on heuristic packing, heuristic search, and normalize islands. We'll get rid of that again and we'll just pack. And you know what? I think that will do. Okay, that's using up enough space. And you can see there's not too many polygons. A little bit of extra detail there. 
we won't worry about that too much. I did turn the adaptivity up quite high. Now, one last thing that we need to do is this is all vertex colors. If I just turn texture on, you'll see it is white. So this is all just the attribute colors. We need to, on the high poly, come to... Uh, color on our attributes and we need to change this to hang on color attributes here we need to change this convert color attribute to face corner and byte color okay so that was object data little arrow, convert attribute, and change it to these two options. And the reason is, is that Blender does not export colors um, automatically anymore unless you do that. Now, we're going to select both of these. That's going to save the project. And let's just make sure our transforms are applied. And let's go to export fbx and i've already got a pair fbx exported so i'm just going to click that and selected objects only turn off animation make sure apply modifiers are on and let's just go to export fbx and i'm just going to pause the recording for a moment while this does its thing okay it appears to be exported so what we'll do is just delete that we'll bring a baker in we'll go to quick loader and we're going to go to pair fbx and try and import that see what happens give it a couple of moments okay now let's just make sure that everything's in place so it will have okay we've got our high poly and our low poly in the right place so let's just disable the high poly again and let's just test that our vertex colors work. So on our high, we'll just turn off the low for a second. On our high, we're just going to go with the albedo color, change it from albedo to vertex. And that does not look like it imported our vertex colors. So let's just go back and make sure we got everything okay. Uh, we had selected the wrong material. So this should be vertex color. And you can see we've got all of that beautiful texture and detail in there on our high poly so let's just turn our high back off turn our low back on and that appears to have the vertex color as well so we just make sure that that's the low one i've got it named as mandarin because i was also doing a mandarin turn that back onto albedo we're going to choose to bake our normals our ambient occlusion we're going to configure this and we're going to come down and we're going to turn on our vertex color as well we can turn on our other maps later on, but for now, this is what we need. Okay, so um, that looks all good. So let's bake our textures. Need to make a file path. I'm just going to call this pair two because I've already had a practice run. And we're going to call this pair. Okay, now let's click preview and see what happens okay it looks like it brought in our ambedo and our our normal and our ambient occlusion let's open up our vertex color and our albedo channel and look at that now obviously we don't have roughness and things like that we can edit that slightly um we'll have to do some 3d magic but as you can see perfectly baked pear and i think less than 10 minutes so um let's just quickly pause that and take that texture back into blender and see how it goes so quickly in shading mode in blender we're just going to open up our uh, textures we'll use the vertex color for the base color and that looks great remember this is a low poly mesh and let's just 
obviously we've got um, Node Wrangler enabled. So if I can just press Shift, right click and oh, Alt, right click and drag to that. We're going to open up our normal. We're going to search for normal map. Plug that in there. And make sure we're on this mode. And then let's just plug our normal into here. Okay, it is in not looking that great. Uh, object space. No. I believe it's because it needs to be non color data. Okay, perfect. And you can actually pump that normal up a little bit to see a little bit more texture. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to get a color ramp and we're just going to build a really rough. Um, A really rough uh, roughness map out of this and I think we want to invert that let's just plug that into the roughness bring this down a little bit Save our project. And that's actually looking really nice. And we are, I think, 11 minutes into the video. So I might just leave it there. Really quick workflow. Hope you guys uh, get that. Look at our UV map. Um, boom. I mean, you can take it further. I mean, I would take this into substance. I'd bake curvature and everything else and get, get it all out but um really we've got something pretty pretty good looking pretty quick from two points turn our stats on 2.7 million to 1.2 and they honestly do not look that different so let's just turn our high on and our low off Turn our attribute. Uh, color back on. So this is our high poly. 2.5 million verts. And this is our low poly once we take it into there. 1.2 verts. Obviously we've got a... Um, lighting on in there let's just use the world lighting beautiful all right thanks a lot sweet as see you later